Today we are going to make paper in the Nepalese tradition uh, and this is actually a really wonderful way uh, to make paper because it allows you to make really big sheets of paper. It also allows you to be a little bit more creative if you want to pour different types of pulp onto uh, your mold or if you want to pour different colors and you want to do some pulp painting or you want to embed objects into uh, your sheets of paper. This uh, technique, the Nepalese technique of, of making paper, allows for a lot more sculptural and uh, uh, kind of layered elements to, to your paper making process versus just pulling a sheet and cooching it and pressing it. Um, so what I'm going to demonstrate today is paper making in the Nepalese uh, tradition, which means that we, at the very base, are going to pour the pulp into the mold. Instead of pulling a sheet of paper, we're pouring the pulp. So that's the difference. Okay, we're not pulling, we're pouring. Um, so it's actually the most simple way to make paper, I think. Um, it's also the most liberating way to make paper. So once you do this, you'll probably want to burn all of your other equipment and just do nothing but make the paper in the Nepalese tradition. Okay? So it's very simple. Uh, you can most definitely do this at home. Uh, the main tools for the Nepalese uh, technique are going to be your mold, uh, which is what we're going to use to capture and form the sheet of paper on. And the mold here is just some uh, mosquito netting that I purchased at the hardware store. And then I made a frame, just like you might make canvas stretchers for painting. Um, so I just cut the pieces uh, and then I screwed them together and I stapled the window screen or mosquito netting over uh, the top of it, okay? So that's our mold. So now that we have our mold, uh, what we need to actually form the sheet of paper in the Nepalese uh, tradition or technique is basically to have some kind of basin of water. You know, you, if you have like a small stream out back or a small pond, you can actually just use that. You could shovel a small little area in your backyard and fill it with water. Um, this works. But uh, here in the studio, what I built is a small basin, um, just using wood and paint and uh, silicone. And then here I have some kind of uh, material that will allow the water to run out. And so I've just got some garden uh, structure stuff and then some uh, uh, bamboo window covering here. So then I put my mold on top of it and I want to knock out any of these uh, air bubbles and there's not enough water. We would like to have about a half a centimeter of water uh, inside of the frame. So I'm going to add more water here. And if the bubbles form, you just kind of tap it and they come out. So you can see here I'm adding the water and it is flooding into my mold. So we're going to fill it a little bit more. We would like to have our basin be relatively level. Um, it makes it easier to make an even sheet of paper. Yeah, this is pretty good. That's not quite a half of a centimeter, but we're getting that. Okay. So, the next part is we want to prepare our pulps. And so uh, the most important thing to do when you're preparing your pulps, uh, when you want to pour uh, a sheet of paper, is to try to make sure that they're uh, relatively even in consistency. So if you have a pulp that's much thicker, so it's really thick, and you have a pulp that's very thin, when you go to pour them, you're going to have a really thick, clumpy area, and you're going to have a really thin, watery area. And so the goal is to try to prepare, pre-mix your pulps so that they are uh, as even as possible, you know. Here we've kind of eyeballed what we thought was even, so we're going to demonstrate that. Um, so here we have some mulberry, which is uh, uh, some gonki that we cooked for three hours, and then we beat for about 25 minutes uh, by hand. And then here we have some um, linen mixed in with some gonki, so this is more of the Chinese tradition. And then here we have some black t-shirt cotton fiber, okay? And so these are basically three different types of fibers and we're going to make a sheet of paper with them. So here we make sure that uh, 
It's nice and mixed up, and I'm going to take a scoop of it, so you could use whatever you want for a scooper. And then uh, I'm going to use my hand as like a shoot or a directional uh, to direct the pulp. Um, I'm also going to use my hand to break the fall of the pulp. You don't want to just dump it in there uh, because it pushes, it moves everything around. So you want to be a little more sophisticated with the way you, you pour your pulp. And what I'm going to do is actually use my right hand, because I'm right-handed, uh, to pour the pulp and my left hand to direct it. Okay, so you see how I poured it in there, and then I'm going to continue. You can also shake your hand a little bit up and down to kind of toss the pulp to evenly distribute it. want you can add formation agent to the pulps. This would allow you to make an even thinner sheet of paper, especially when working with the gompi. So here I'm just tapping. You can't drag the pulp. If I try to pull it like this, it'll make a hole. So what you want to do is you just tap it gently. Okay? You pat it. And you kind of just pat along. And this actually acts um, as um, a method to basically and get the, the fibers to further interlock. If you drag your hand, you'll rip it open. So unless you want that to happen, then you should not do that. Okay, so I'm just kind of gently tapping the surface. Um, and then I would like to add a little bit of this uh, kind of Chinese recipe here. And again, I'm kind of shaking my hand to kind of throw some of the pulp around. This helps to distribute it. And now I'm going to finish with a little bit of black along the bottom. And this is a little bit thicker here. Okay. And you can kind of like paint in here a little bit. Um, and so, we want to kind of gently tap this area. Pat it a little bit. The corners often become the weakest areas because they're hard to get to sometimes. So it's good to double check them. Um, there we go. So after the sheet of paper is formed, um, we can basically just pick it up gently, lift it out of the water. So you can see here that we have our sheet of paper that is formed. Uh, Nepalese sheet of paper has dried and now we want to take it off. You can see that it is dry right inside the frame. So we let it dry on the mold. Um, and so for every mold you can have one sheet of paper, then when it's dry you can pull it out. So the best way really to remove the sheet of paper is to flip it over. So here I'm working from the back side. And then you want to take an object like a bone folder works super well. I think you could use like a spoon or a, a butter knife. You have to be a little more gentle. The bone folder is really perfect for this. And what you want to do is you're just going to kind of gently work with the bone folder around the entire surface and kind of starting with the perimeter almost of the sheet of paper, gently pushing down. I'm not like attacking it, um, just kind of gently massaging the back and you'll see that it starts to, the sheet of paper starts to release from the, the, uh, from the screen material. And so now I'm just going to take the bone folder and continue to work. And to be quite honest, that's all you need to do. It was very easy with the bone folder. Uh, so if you can buy one of these uh, online or at your local art stores, they're about five bucks. Um, and then you kind of take the, uh, the mold and you give it a quick shape, and the sheet of paper actually comes right out.
And so here's our Nepal these sheet of paper that we made yesterday. And now we have the mold. We can go back and make another one.